thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, so I just introduced the panel. We've got uh, David Forrest from First National in Cairns. David is also the chairperson of First National Australia wide. Janet McNeil from McNeil Real Estate at the sunny morning Peninsula. Yes, and gorgeous that, down here today. <laughs> sounds good, sounds good. So David and we also have Katrina Gobert, uh, also from First National in Cairns. So the idea is that we um, do a 10 minute whiz around the site um, and that um, the area representatives we will give a briefing session of 10 minutes say about what the status is in that state so what can we as landlords do and not do and then we follow up straight away with the 10 minute um, q a so you have a chat window in the um in the panel and hi al we have a couple of people on on live chat through um through uh facebook well i was watching and dexter is watching um so what i will do is hopefully i will be able to uh If I can multitask, which I'm not very good in, questions are welcome. Okay, right, good. So I will um, see that I can uh, monitor the uh, Facebook Live and any questions that come through there, and I'll put them through the panel. For the people that are in the um, in the live stream on uh, Eyes On. Feel free to ask questions. Again, I will endeavor to um, monitor that. All right. Well, if I can ask David and Katrina to, um, is, yeah, Katrina is in the I'm here. stream. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Well, if you can give us the overview of uh, Queensland, please, uh, and I'll leave it to you. Maybe you can just give yourselves a, a brief introduction. Um, I'll go first then. Um, first the um, situation in Queensland is obviously varied across the state. Uh, we have feedback from different members that, uh, from being extremely busy. Uh, David, problem. this sounds really bad. I've lost everyone. Janet, if so you can I... mute yourself, uh, unmute your, mute yourself, that would be great. There's a microphone button on the left hand side. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, as I was saying, the, the Queensland market is very across the state. Uh, different members are reporting different activity levels. Uh, I can talk about kids where we are very busy in terms of rentals uh, and sales, not so, so smart. Um, Tablelands, they're looking at being busy in, in all aspects and saying that they're not seeing a great deal of impact at all. Um, we've got other offices uh, down south, southeast corner, where they're suggesting that the market in terms of sales is still busy uh, and they are strong in terms of rentals. I think the issue that we're facing, uh, especially in terms of property management, is a matter of uh, making negotiation uh, the priority in your life. And I'd have to say that the bulk of our rent roll uh, is not being uh, attacked, I suppose, if you like, uh, as the way people would make things. Uh, Katrina can give us the actual numbers of uh, arrangements we've had to make. And they are probably about 10%. Uh, yeah. Um, we, yeah, less than 10% easily. 
you know, less than 10 percent uh, and you know that, that is an encouraging sign uh, it does come down to actually making sure you know what you're talking about uh, and you know uh, how to go about negotiating the position uh, we did have an issue in uh, in Queensland or, or a, a situation that could have become an issue where government was proposing a number of changes uh, those changes I think would have would, would have actually brought about uh, wholesale issues uh, and fortunately over the uh, last week through the uh, activity of the uh, major networks and the REIQ um, the government has agreed to um, other outcomes that will actually mean that we can work forward with the market, with the tenants, uh, in a sensible manner. Uh, and I applaud the government for taking on that uh, approach from the RIQ and the industry. So now we've, we've got a situation where you can actually negotiate and a tenant can't just ring up and say, you know, a free reign on my, my rent, I want to not pay rent. Um, they've actually got to demonstrate uh, a loss uh, in income due to coronavirus, not something else. A minimum uh, of 25%. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, a minimum no of 25%. Uh, and it's the rent is an abatement, it's not, it's not a waiver. So rental can be retained after or recovered after the. Uh, the, the sort of the major issue of the coronavirus is gone. There are other sort of onerous uh, requirements that were heading our way with regard to viewings and uh, entry requirements. They are now made much more sensible and much more operable in terms of uh, our operation. So I suppose my, my real message, my message from the beginning has been to talk to your clients and customers and negotiate and find a common place to move forward with. And that's probably the most important part at this stage, still. Yeah. I hope I've left some uh, thoughts for you, Katrina. Um, you've basically covered everything, but yeah, like David said, we're basically just encouraging all of the property managers to have conversations with the tenant and the owner and meet a realistic middle ground. And just really emphasise to, ten to the tenants that um, for them to seek the support that is out there and not just immediately ask for a rent reduction without finding out what help they can actually get first. Maybe I can jump in there. Um, the REIQ has made a suggestion for any landlord to lobby the uh, minister with a letter or with an email i should say and uh, we have certainly put this email to all of our property friends that have uh, properties in queensland i can only strongly strongly suggest to all landlords to do this and to copy the email and send it to the minister because at the moment from where i'm sitting and i'm a big believer in playing fair i'm a big believer that um, no landlord should just evict a tenant which is illegal or out of the question anyway according to our fearless legal scomo uh, but there is a right way and a wrong way of doing things and at the moment um, I believe that the uh, scales are too much tilted in the favor of the tenants and that needs to be balanced out so as much as I can uh, encourage every landlord that has property in Queensland I encourage you to do this uh, email to the minister. I don't know what your view is on that, David. Yeah, look, we've sent it out to all of our landlords. I think it's a must. The legislation, I believe, is going to Parliament uh, on Wednesday. Uh, at this stage, we look like we've got cooperation, but you know, it doesn't hurt for the uh, the, uh, the number of voices to be as big as possible. Uh, and you know, have to say. Yeah. 
situation would have been um, pretty poor uh, had we not, received, not achieved the likely outcomes that we believe that will happen on Wednesday. Okay, great. Excellent. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see whether we've got any questions. Um, at the moment, no, Luke reckons this has been fixed. Uh, Rohan, Connie, Rajesh, Justin, Dexter, Al, any questions? Now is the time to ask. No. Um, Lenny, if you're on the call, if you can uh, make contact. Oh, shivers, yes. I was going to record this session, which I forgot. So uh, let me do that now. Apologies for that. Uh, Lenny, if you can um, make a contact with uh, Ino Warvis, please. I think she's trying to get in and can't. All right. I don't have any questions as such um, at this stage. My daughter will get this. Um, so, yeah. This is uh, mayhem, just a normal state of affairs at the moment, you know. Uh, I'm no different. This is a, a position in flux and um, things are being revealed as we speak and every day we get more information. That's just the way that it goes at the moment, so that's okay. All right, I don't have any questions as such. Um, yeah, my, my strong suggestion to any landlord is to uh, be in touch with your uh, rental manager. Essentially, uh, they are uh, your contact, our contact. They know best what to do. Um, and uh, that's, that's what I would suggest. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much, David. Thanks very much, Katrina. And um, I might then hand over to Janet. Thank you, David and Katrina actually need to go. They are due for another meeting. So uh, thanks very much for joining in. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. If you would like to uh, unmute yourself, Janet. Yeah. Okay. We are? Floor is yours. Hello. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to join um, you and uh, and your clients and everybody. Um, I didn't quite realise I'd be on Facebook Live, but anyway, here we go. <laughs> um, so basically, no it's pressure. pretty much no, not much. Um, it's pretty much similar to uh, what the other guys were saying is that um, it's not legislated yet, so we're expecting that to come through um, this this week. Um, your landlords and your tenants, they are encouraged to uh, basically negotiate and agree on a rent reduction. Now, again, that rent reduction doesn't mean they don't have to pay that difference. So, for example, if you drop the rent 20... Sorry? Yeah? If you drop the rent, um, let's say, $20 a week, uh, they do still have to pay that money back. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, so I'll keep going. So uh, they do still owe the money. So it's not a, um, a free ride. So in the discussion with the tenant, you as a landlord, um, uh, sorry, as a, as a uh, agent, we also have to impress upon that tenant that, yes, the landlord is giving you a reduction. However, it's not um, something that's going to be ongoing and it will need to be um, repaid. So therefore, we'd need to organise some sort of a payment plan for the balance. So that's one thing. Um, we also know that if a landlord does provide a tenant with a uh, rent relief, so a reduction in their rent, um, the landlord um, can also then from the government get a 25% discount on their land tax. Now, land tax obviously is payable on um, for landlords who own property that in excess of $500,000. $500, so if the rates, the rateable um, 
value of your property is 500,000 or more, or if you own multiple properties and the total is 500,000 or more, then you do pay rent, land tax. Um, and the government is also allowing you to defer the balance of your land tax payable until the 31st of March. Now, generally, most owners are mum and dad landlords and with one property. So there's probably a lot of landlords out there that won't get this uh, rent, this sorry, land tax re relief anyway, because they don't pay it in the first place. So it's not necessarily a huge uh, benefit to a landlord. Um, obviously, landlords can apply for mortgage relief. What they do need to be aware of, of course, is if they do get that relief from their bank, um, again, it's not a free ride. Uh, they, the bank will give you, you know, three or six months or whatever they agree to, uh, to no longer pay your um, monthly payments. However, a landlord must be aware that that is going to be added on to the money that they owe. So again, the bank isn't giving um, a landlord a free ride. The bank will add it to the term or add it to the repayments. So you'll end up owing more if you take that than if you um, tried to make the payments as a landlord. Um, tenants can apply for rent relief grant. Um, they can apply for up to $2,000. Um, if they qualify and they receive this money, it actually goes straight to the uh, landlord or their agent into their bank. But again, a tenant will only be able to apply for that if one, they have agreed on a rent reduction with the landlord or there's been mediation if there was no um, actual straight up agreement. Uh, and if that tenant has less than $5,000 cash in the bank and they must be paying at least 30% of their income on rent and <laughs> their household income must be less than $1,903 per week. So how many people are going to qualify for that? Really have no idea. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things that the government said this is a great thing and it'll help you, but in reality, not too sure how many people it will actually help. Uh, rent is frozen till the 26th of September, so any landlord who was expecting to be able to increase their rent, um, we've had a few where rent uh, was due to be increased and of course there's no uh, rental increases for until the 26th of September. Um, no evictions, so basically tenants are in a position where um, we, you know, generally we can't get them out of the property unless uh, for special circumstances, which include if the property is damaged by the tenant, if they use it for criminal activity, um, or if serious violence occurs. So there are you know, uh, reasons we can get them out, but generally if, it's, if they're not paying their rent, due to having lost income, due directly to the COVID-19, then uh, no, we can't get them out. So um, it is, you know, it is important that, um, as the other guys were saying, make sure you have a really good open communication um, as a landlord with your rental manager and as a tenant. So make sure there's good dialogue happening. Um, if there's, you know, anything going on in the landlord's life or in the tenant's life that's going to affect this whole thing, we need to be able to talk through that and come up with some agreement. Um, routine inspections. So again, uh, in Victoria, you do a routine inspection three months after the tenant first moves in and then every six months thereafter. Generally, the um, uh, rental manager will go physically to the property and have a look through and take some photos or make some notes and just make sure everything's okay and report back to the owner if there's any maintenance needs doing. Um, obviously, this is you know an, a very important part of our job to make sure that the landlord's property is being looked after and if there's any maintenance needs doing that they actually know about that and can do it. So those now are on, online as well. So what happens there is that um, the tenant will walk around with their phone and they'll, you know, we'll do it with Zoom or um, Google Hangouts or any other sort of different um, online method at the moment. So the tenant will walk around. Uh, we will be obviously in the office or at home seeing it. We'll take notes. We'll ask them to take photos of certain parts. We'll ask them to report back. So that's working well. Uh, tenants are, you know, pretty happy with that. Most of them are obviously tech savvy. Uh, basically you just walk around with your phone. So it's pretty pretty simple. So that's working well. Uh, we did, as the other guys alerted to, we did have an issue over the Easter period where we were not going to be allowed to show anyone through a property that was for sale or physically go to a property that was for rent. That has changed. 
So we can now um, physically take a person through a property that is for sale or that is on the rental market and uh, obviously we're looking for a new tenant. So one agent and one uh, in person inspecting, so one buyer or one tenant can go through the property at a time. So it's, it, you know, we've got to still stick with the social distancing and, and um, using gloves and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we, we need to follow that. Uh, VCAT, so if you, you know, had an issue and you wanted to um, do something through VCAT, whether it's, you know, getting the tenant out or in the past, you know, increases, whatever, um, VCAT in Victoria, they're only hearing urgent cases now and urgent cases are only being heard over the phone. So all um, non-critical cases have been adjourned um, indefinitely. So obviously we don't know when it's going to come back. It all depends on what's going on in, in the world. Uh, when it comes to um, ways that people can access the government funding to help them with income, uh, you've got the JobKeeper which obviously is employers. Again, there are strict um, uh, things around, you know, how you qualify to be able to get the JobKeeper payment and a employer can pl apply up to $1,500 per employee. Um, job seeker, again, job seekers, people that have lost their job due to, you know, directly impacted by this um, COVID-19, they also can apply for a job a seeker payment, but again, they must qualify. So there are some pretty strict uh, rules around, you know, who qualifies and, and how they qualify and what information they need to provide to prove that they have been directly affected. So the government's put a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of information out there. There are pages and pages of paperwork <laughs> to look through and try and find, you know, what what relates to me and how does it relate to me and, and what help can I get? Um, so from a landlord point of view, uh, obviously the main thing that we need to do is talk to your rental manager, see if they can talk to your tenant, make sure that at least some sort of rent is being paid. Um, if the tenant is suffering, at least you know have a discussion, try and offer them um, an alternative to get around it. Because I guess if you, the, a tenant basically, they do have the right now to also break lease. If they feel that they simply can't pay um, and can't stay in the property, they can break lease and they won't be charged any um, break lease fees for that. So a tenant can move or uh, a landlord can, you know, discuss with a tenant and keep them there. So from a landlord's perspective, do you let the tenant go or do you keep them? Well, you know, better the devil you know kind of thing. If you've got a good uh, tenant and you really, you know, think that they're great and they generally, um, genuinely are struggling, I guess the best thing to do there is, is, you know, try and keep them in the property because if you let them go, uh, you've then got to get another tenant and with the um, uncertainty around everything, you really don't know um, how good a tenant that would be. Or you take that risk and you let that, you know, existing tenant go and you get someone in who is in a better position financially and has a better, um, more stable job or is working in an industry that is, um, you know, not as affected. So there's a lot of a lot of questions around it. Um, I don't know that I have every answer. I don't think anyone has every answer, even the government. Uh, but the main thing, the most important thing is communication is the number one um, really high priority for everybody. That's been great. Thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, look, um, very, very uh, good summary there. Thank you, Janet. Um, in general terms, I'll go back to what I said before and what David also said. The best way is to talk to your rental managers, um, mm -hmm. enjoy and engage with the rental uh, manager to have a good discussion with your tenants if you need to. Um, it is not as easy anymore as it was initially made out to be on either side. And I think the, the right thing to do is to give everybody a chance. It is fair to say that the legislation that came from the federal has been translated into various state legislations 
Um, I just got a briefing document here that um, came out for Queensland, which is probably what Luca referred to. So if I just quote from that, so it's been agreed that uh, the ban was removed on the landlords requiring any discounted rent to be paid back after the conclusion of the emergency period. Um, the tenancy proof of hardship will be required and to be eligible for protection under the eviction moratorium, tenants will have to prove they have lost 25%. Is, is that requirement is in Victoria as well, isn't it, Janet? Uh, yes, with the, uh, well, certainly for a tenant to be able to obtain a grant, um, they need to prove that they are still paying at least 30% of their income on rent. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fascinating to me how every state is doing a different uh, I don't understand interpretation. that. Interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that just goes back to the real estate law in, in Australia. Mm. It's not federal, it's state-based, so every mm. state is doing their own thing. Um, yeah, just to continue on in Queensland, 75% of the loss will have to be in uh, threshold before a tenant can end a tenancy with a seven-day cap on break lease fees. And you can request evidence of reduced income similar to examples you would request at the beginning of a tenancy. You may not request bank statements, evidence of savings, or request the excess super. Uh, the recovery of discounted rent, a critical change in the government position is recovery. Recovering discounted rent will now be the subject of negotiation between the individual and the parties. Uh, when we started off in Queensland, um, the uh, rent that had been foregone would have not had to be paid back, which of course mm -hmm. opened the floodgates. I mean, uh, Janet, you would probably not be any different. There are a lot of landlords out there that have one or two properties, mom and, uh, mom and dad type of investors. And if you forgo rent for six months, you uh, can pretty much kiss goodbye your rental property. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it makes it very, very difficult. But these are things that are partly still in flux, I worry. Um, and um, some states are a bit faster, some states are a bit slower. Yeah, and Warwick is just saying here on Facebook, the joys of state government. I find it mm. incredible that, that this is not federal, but anyway, it would have been too nice, too easy. Uh, just the last thing on the extension of tenancies, uh, extending the term of a tenancy agreement during the COVID-19 emergency period is limited to September 30th, 2020, unless agreed otherwise by the owner and the tenant, or there is an appropriate ground to end the tenancies. Okay, um, I have a question from Fearless Frog, whoever that is. Does it make a difference, the landlord living in Victoria, do we deal with in the Victorian law? Well, I can answer that. The uh, state law is applicable according to where your property is. Would you agree with that, Janet? Yeah, there, I know there was some confusion um, recently about, or something was brought in to say that, you know, if you were an interstate landlord, um, you couldn't, uh, basically have any rights really if your property was interstate but obviously there are a lot a lot of landlords that live in one state and uh, own a property in another one so that was you know quite ridiculous so it has to the property where where the where the property is is where the law um, states yeah that is my understanding that was what confirmed uh if I can ask the people, uh, please, everybody to mute. Uh, I don't want to do that centrally because then everybody goes off. Um, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was also confirmed uh, by Peter Griffin, uh, one of our most experienced uh, legal eagles and, and lawyer, of course. Uh, state law applies. So um, to the fearless frog, um, Wherever your property is, that's where the 
state law applies. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, is there anything else? I'm just forsaking through Facebook as well. No. There have been a number of briefing sessions that we did uh, on behalf of Property Friends. They can all be checked up and uh, looked up at both YouTube as well as our on our Property Friends uh, Facebook site. Any other questions? I will record, uh, sorry, distribute the recording to anybody that wants to and we'll also put it, is that okay with you, Jeanette, uh, up on Facebook? Yes, yep. Fantastic, thank you. All right, uh, last chance to uh, ask any questions, otherwise we'll keep it short, sharp and succinct. Let me just check the chat here. Yeah, feel this frog says things, all good, thank you. Uh, we're all getting used to uh, to the, uh, oh, we've got two fearless frogs to the new software. Uh, next time <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to learn to uh, advise people to change the name when they come in. Um, there is a possibility there. Uh, I am trialing this new software as can be seen and uh, that's just technology. I wanted to make sure that we have the best possible um, way of transmitting this. All right, um, there is a question from Warwick Murray. Did you cover landlord insurance impact? Um, not specifically, great question though, uh, Warwick. Uh, we have had a previous briefing session with Mark O'Reilly where he spoke extensively about that. Please have a look at that. Um, I summarize it as follows. The insurers are deeming this not to be an event. How that works, I have no understanding. However, <laughs> be that as it may, under the insurance clauses, this is not an event. Hence, there is no insurance for it. Mm. Go figure. Um, Mark O'Reilly uh, from Australian Brokers Countrywide also suggested that he is expecting somebody to get up and um, will challenge it and until such time that it is heard in uh, one or the other courts, um, you know, that is just the way it is. It sucks and really I would suggest there to uh, talk to your rental manager in combination uh, with the insurance brokers. It's a very specialized area and it depends, each policy is different again. Mm -hmm. So all I can suggest there to talk to your um, insurance broker. Uh, Warwick says my tenant said that they will pay half the rent. Well, it depends which um, state your property is in Warwick. Um, most states have now adopted a um, scenario where the tenant has to has some owners of proof that they have in fact been affected and that their income has in fact been reduced, um, which I think is fair. Um, and you know that's the way that I look at it. In the briefing sessions that we have done previously, we've suggested to all landlords to be fair. And uh, as Katrina said, the devil that you know is better than the devil that mm. you don't know. We actually had a situation in Cairns um, where a tenant got a notice to leave before COVID-19. They found it next to impossible to find another property, which may have had something to do with the entry in Tika, that they, they were um, late payers and, and didn't pay for a while and that sort of thing. So that certainly didn't help them. Uh, in any event, uh, the landlord also uh, did not want to change horses, so to speak, in COVID-19 mm. during the period. So an agreement was struck whereby the tenant paid up all the arrears first up and then paid um, two weeks ahead as sort of a security cushion. Um, so in this instance, um, 
I think that was a reasonable solution. Um, they went into a six month lease and that works for both parties. So let's see how we go. Um, sorry, I had a bit of a cough there. Um, yeah, uh, Warwick says um, in Victoria, yeah, we've just been through Victoria. Um, I suggest you, you go back to the uh, recording, Warwick. Sorry, uh, there was a bit of a um, lag with the logons and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, no more questions on Facebook. Let me just check here. No. Uh, no, okay. Anything else you want to add, Janet? Um, just, uh, just basically, Uwe, that um, tenants obviously are affected by this and, you know, potentially quite dramatically. Um, but I think they also need to keep in mind that so are their landlords potentially. You know, um, if we get a situation, and, and I'm sure there are many, fortunately not in, in my uh, business, but there are situations where it's the landlord and the tenant who have both lost either their complete job or, you know, their income's reduced. And it's a difficult time for everyone. And, of course, if, if the rent is reduced, then clearly the... Uh, property manager's income also reduces. So we're all in the same boat. We just need to try and get through the next six months. I think that's that's a very, very nice summary statement at the end, Janet. Um, reasonableness from both sides, that common sense prevails mm. is what I'm saying. I agree, yep. yep. Okay, fantastic. Uh, then I'll uh, end with that. Oh, one. very good. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a bit of fun with everything as well you do. <laughs> so, thank you very much janet thank you for the people on facebook um i will uh lodge the recording i think i missed the first five minutes but uh, i will uh lodge the recording on facebook and make it available to whoever wants it and of course i'll make it available to you janet and to david and katrina as well all right enjoy Let's be reasonable. Thank you. And uh, let's continue on our road of investments. It's a fun time. Thanks very Absolutely. much, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Thank you.